Now that we've examined one-dimensional blend spaces, we're ready to examine 2D blend spaces. The difference between this is now we're entering something that allows us to have a grid, and we can interpolate or transition between three or four animations at one time, and we're able to dynamically see that inside of the blend space preview. With this, it comes into the idea of additional extraction like we've had before, the different types of animations for the blend spaces, and then also another thing that we're going to look at is pseudo examples and how we can use those to control a buffer outside of the simple blend space to be able to have animation that plays back even though it's outside of what we want to have because exceeding that boundary and not having something may cause it to overload a crash. So going into here, we're just going to go to a simple one. So let's go to move turn one. And immediately you're able to see that the blend space preview is quite a bit more detailed. I'm going to open it up and then we'll zoom out here a little bit. And we can see the grid that actually exists right here. And this grid in itself is defined through these dimensions that we had before. I'm going to take it off the screen real quick. And then the cell count right here is what defines the dimensions here. And this is basically the resolution of the blend space for as many of the combinations you want. Now, in knowing this, it's a case-by-case -case basis because not always will you need an extreme amount of cell counts. You may just need a simple amount of interpolation between the two of them but the resolution will give better results with more tweaking in the long run. So if I were to change the cell count here and drop this down, you would notice it dynamically switches. And now if we have less, there's less resolution and there's actually less quality behind it. So let's go ahead and change it back to 19. And that's basically how both of the axes change. So if I change turn speed, it would be the same thing. Now down here, we're actually combining these. And this is something that we didn't talk about before because it's a simple parameter that we were setting and we weren't blending between multiples. So if I were to zoom up here, all of these are either based on a quad or they're based on a tri. And this, as before, is what's actually being blended. You can see that this is active in a quad and this is actually where my blend space exists. So if I were to dynamically change this, you would notice it switches, and we would be able to see whether it's a tri or a quad itself. And if I were changing the turn speed, we would be able to see exactly how it's interpolating. And keep in mind that this grid right here is the basis or the resolution for all four of those points that are being normalized as well. So how exactly do these exist? And how do we know that we want to blend them together? Well, we can see that we have all of these examples, and it goes from 0 all the way up to 9, which this is the ninth value. So how do we get that into a grid to see what it would connect? We basically have to try them out and see exactly what it is that we want to blend together, and that is done in the annotations. So we have 0, 1, 5, and 4, and this is a counterclockwise rotation inside of the annotations to see how we want them to sync up. So say I was to remove 4. I'm going to go ahead and right click and remove it. And now we can see that 4 may still exist in the examples, but now it's outside of the actual blend space and exists outside of the runtime environment. So we wouldn't actually calculate this even though because the annotations don't state that we would blend between them. So let's go ahead and revert back to it. So we want to go to revert. And now we've stepped back to where we have four inside of the annotations. And in doing this, we understand how annotations can bring the blend spaces together to be able to create this interpolation. And now through this, we're combining and being able to take this character and understand how we can get this kind of normalization across, in this case, four values. So now that we've kind of covered this, 
we can go into another realm called pseudo examples. Let me find a pseudo example inside of here. We can go to move turn two. And now we have quite a few more animations in play. And you would think, okay, we have more animations, so we've just added all of these real examples. But the difference is, we actually haven't. Inside of the blend space as it is right now, we can clip through this grid because that's the actual blend space in play. And we can understand that all of it is covered by these pseudo examples, especially this one outside. Since we don't need as much resolution based on the fact that we're not moving back or turning, we're able to push this pseudo example out in front of three to be able to extract information to give it a buffer. So none of these examples that are red are actually real. And if we were to close this up a little bit, we can notice, let's go ahead and right click and remove all of them. And after removing all of them, we can notice that these are actually pseudo examples, as in false or buffer examples. And these are the real animations like we had before. So we automatically were able to extrapolate the information and combine them just like the previous 2D blend space. I'm going to go ahead and just revert like I did before, and now we have all of these examples back. So when you see all of these, they're simply going to be annotated like before, but they're just examples to be able to bring that buffer along with it. The best way to picture this before we leave pseudo examples is just imagining this value right here and then increasing the speed of it or increasing all the values in general, whether it be move speed, turn speed, travel speed, it doesn't matter. And we're just multiplying and adding it up for each one of these. So it's not a combination between all these different animations. It's just an exaggeration of number six pushing out to 15.